What's up, everybody? Henry Fernandez here again on the podcast, and we're going to talk about the successes and failures of parenting. Yes, we're going to talk about parenting today, and I'm qualified to talk about that because I've got two children of my own, two boys, and I've learned a lot you know, since I've become a father. And it was not what I thought it was when I was, a, 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 you know, a single person, a married man without children. Parenting, first of all, will take you into a school of training how to deal with other human beings that God has entrusted you with. You know, parenting is quite different from dealing with your siblings, dealing with relatives and friends, co-workers, parenting is simply God giving you the responsibility to train up a child or children, to tutor them, to give them hope, to give them an opportunity to develop so that when they become of the proper age, they're able to um, you know, manage their own lives according to the will of God. So don't ever forget that. As a parent, if you are a parent, God has mandated you. He has put on you the responsibility of training your children, giving them the proper training. Now, please, I want that to settle in your spirit for a minute. God has entrusted with you, in you the responsibility to train, to develop. So therefore, if your responsibility is to train and to develop another human being, which by the way, doesn't come with a manual, you know, we get so caught up with the birth of the child, the baby stages and so forth, but we fail to understand that we have to understand our role. So parents, I want to talk to you. And for those of you who are hoping to become parents one day, you need to listen to this podcast because this is going to help you win at what you do. Because there's some things we do as parents that will set ourselves up for failure. And there's some things that we will do, of course, will give us great success in the parenting area, right? But you have to first see that it is your duty, it is your responsibility, and where can you go to get the proper information so that you can train your children up the godly way? First of all, of course, the Bible. And I know it's especially with this generation today, you know, I mean, don't talk to me about the Bible. A lot of them will say that, you know, I just, I, I just want to do things on my own. You know, there's a scripture that, that I find to be very, um, you know, uh, powerful. It says, you know, um, you know, train up a child the way they should go. So when they're old, they will not depart from it. That's the word of God. And I think all of us must understand that. So you and I must look to the word of God for guidance to help us find ways to understand another human being. I don't care if the child is two months, six months, six years. Our job as parents is to go to the manual, God's word, to help us to become better at what we are given, better at the job, the responsibility that's been placed on us. That's one, the Bible. Number two, I think it's so important that you surround yourself with men and women who possess great wisdom, people who have done it before, people who have succeeded, people who have even failed at parenting. It's always good to get both sides, the positive and the negatives, right? to understand how they did it. And one of the things I honor a lot, I honor our forefathers, you know, our parents, our grandparents, and some of you are listening to the podcast. I, I, I want to salute you because all of you have really set the bar high. You have raised multiple children. You did it with little Uh, Some of you as single mothers, you did it on your own. Single fathers, you did it on your own. Didn't have much. 
but you did it and your children came out well. You know, some of your children, of course, you struggled with them a little bit. They strayed away, but look at them now. I have to commend you. You did an outstanding job in supporting your uh, children. Now, um, I want my audience to understand that there are great people out there who, if you pay attention and even create a relationship with them, they'll tutor you. They'll help you to understand that, wait a minute, man, you are a great person. You know, you can parent well. You can, you, you, you can handle that young man. You can handle that young girl. You can handle them babies, you know, and so forth, because they've been there. They've done those things, and they can help you. Of course, other materials, books, and you got the internet now, and you got to be careful of the internet now, because not everything on the internet is factual or is helpful. So you got to vet those things and make sure that you possess yourself or you, you, you put around you, I should say, you draw to yourself things that can really help you to become a good uh, parent. Now, parenting is, I think it's a wonderful experience. It's a wonderful experience um, to, to, to give birth to a child. And when I say give birth, I'm talking not just a woman, to be able to be a part of what makes up that child, whether you're the male who deposited the seed into the womb of that woman and the woman who carried that child throughout that nine months and gave birth to that child. I mean, it's a huge accomplishment. It is a huge responsibility that is placed on you. Now, here's what you do. Let me deal with the pitfalls or the failures of parenting. First thing I think we all should understand, and please hear me clearly today, you cannot um, steer your child in the right direction at a later age, if you will. Let me break that down. Be careful that you do not waste time in the early stage of your child's life. And then when the child gets to a certain age, that's the time you're trying to implement what should have been implemented from six months, a year, two years, up to six years. I can't tell you how many times I've seen parents who have ignored certain things about their children, uh, let it, certain things slide by and so forth, allow kids to do everything they want to do uh, because, again, they want to give kids their freedom. And a lot of times parents are even trying to um, erase some of the negatives their parents imposed on them from not allowing their kids to experience those things or don't want to impose those rules on their children because it was bad for them. You got to be careful because you always have to remember, you are responsible for the development of that child. And you cannot wait until that young man gets to 16, 17, 18, when he is trying to discover himself. And God helps if you're a single mom, you know, you can't wait until that age to try to, you know, discipline him or try to set some rules or boundaries. Can't do that. You have to instill that. Now, it's, it's what it is. You're single, you're not married, or you're divorced. You know, look, we don't have any time right now to go over that and to argue about that, and debate that, and try to, you know, rectify that. That's done. The fact is you are left with the responsibility of being a father and a mother. And I guess it's, I understand that it's challenging, but you have to make sure that you understand at what stages of your children's life you are to impose what kind of rules and boundaries. Because if you don't do that, you're going to fail at parenting. I've had people come to me with their children, don't know what to do with their children, and in talking to them, I've discovered that they're trying to have people, whether myself or counselors, to fix something that's been, you know, boiling for what? Years, 
something that's been knitted together, something that has been trained and put together because they weren't doing what they were supposed to do with their children at an early age. Don't do that. Make sure as a parent that you understand, okay, from my child is a few months to one year, what are the boundaries? What are the training skills? And there are materials out there. What are the things I need to do to help my child develop educationally? You know, a lot of reading. You got to read to your children a lot. Um, um, You know, don't allow your children just to play, play with toys, toys, toys. If, If that's the case, are the toys educational toys? Think about that, right? Um, you have to also set sleeping patterns for your children. I mean, simple things like that. If you just let your children just go run wild, do whatever they want to do, then of course it's going to affect your sleeping pattern and so forth. And then you can't wait until, you know, two years, three years trying to wean them off a bad sleeping pattern. You have to take responsibility and take charge over your children. You've got to do that. So you got to set these boundaries, right? When when your child is going to middle school and high school, you've got to set certain boundaries because you have to understand when your son or your daughter is in high school, it requires a whole different set of rules and boundaries from when they were in elementary and uh, middle school. I mean, a whole, because you see your daughter, when she was in elementary, oh, you know, she's trying to find herself and all that kind of stuff. Um, Middle school, you know, she has a sense of, okay, she's looking around, she see what others are doing and she's trying to, you know, okay, identify what best fits her. But when she goes to high school, she is now carving out our own path. Same thing with the young man. Your son, he is trying to find, now you may not like the direction they're going, but that's what it is. They're trying to find, okay, I like that. I'm going to pursue that because I know I'm developing and I'm growing into manhood. I'm growing into womanhood. So I'm going to do those things. And of course, when they make certain decisions or head down a certain path, it freaks us out as parents right? Because we're like, no, no, no. But you see, they're trying to develop. But if you don't follow the trend and at pivotal points in your parenting, place certain rules and boundaries and certain information to your children, then you're going to lose them. You're going to lose control and you're going to fail at parenting. But you can succeed If you understand, okay, because it's a pattern. We're all human beings. Every girl have the same temptation that your daughter is going through. Every young man is going to go through the same or similar temptation your son is going through. And there's a whole cloud of witnesses. People who have parented their children, have gone through some stuff, that you can ask them, you can say, okay, how, how can I figure this out? How can I win in parenting my children? Think about that. So you've got to find ways. And, and, and I don't have time on the podcast to go into details of how to find ways, but you get the gist of what I'm saying. Find out the different stages, their age groups, you know, from, again, a couple of months to a few years to elementary to middle school to high school and even in college, what you need to do. For my two boys, I, one of the things I failed at, and I can tell you this, is I think there were pivotal points, pivotal points in their developing stages where they needed me to do certain things. For example, I never forget because of my schedule, I'm busy. I I go to all of their games. I very seldom would miss a game. 
um, all of their functions at school. I was very involved with my child, my children's, um, you know, um, development through school and through the different ages. I was there. No, as busy as I was, I was there. I have, I've had moments where I wouldn't take invitations to go speak somewhere. Um, you know, if, if my child had a particular thing at school or something like that. But when I come home, because, you know, I'm, I'm at two different locations most of the days of the week. So when I come home, it's my rest in place. It is my place to just unwind, just chill out. So I would come home and of course they're meeting me at the door. I come home and dad, let's go outside and play ball. And I would do it, do it, do it, until there were moments when I'm like, ah, oh, no, man, I said, I'm tired. And you could tell that it affected them because they were like, come on, you know, play. I'd even go out there, let's throw a couple of balls. They love basketball and football. Let's, let's just shoot a couple of balls. Let, let me throw a couple of balls uh, to you and so forth. But it lasts two minutes, five minutes. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm out of it, man. I got to go in and so forth. And um, it wasn't until later in life, now when they were in high school, maybe 11th grade or so for both of them, I'm trying to bond with my boys and I'm like, okay, let's go. Let, you know, I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. Cause I, my mind is like, they're gonna go to college. They're grown up now, man. and. Don't know how often I'm going to see them. I'm thinking all these things. So let me just put my time in. And there were several times I went to my boys and I said, come on, man, let's go outside and let's shoot some ball. Let's throw some ball. And they look at me, no, nah, dad, I'm not really, not interested. The first time they did that to me, I'm like, what? You turned me down? And it dawned on me. That's exactly what I did them. Now, Marky, I was busy and I was out there, you know, bringing home the bacon, if you will, trying to keep a roof over their head, trying to support the family. I get that. But um, I wish I could take those days back. I wish I could take those days back where I could come home and say, hey, boys, let's hang. Let's hang out, man, together. Let's let's roll. Let's let's just play. They're not. I mean, we used to jump in the car, especially my youngest son. He, he and I love the water. I mean, we're beach lovers. Um, let's go. And I look forward to that now multiple times. Hey, he'll come home from college and I'll say, let's 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 take a ride. Oh, no, dad, because he got his own plans. He takes his car and he's gone. <laughs> you know. So parents, I'm telling you, 18 years goes by quickly. That will go by you so fast like lightning, man. So what you need to do, spend quality time with your children. Now, of course, there are times like me, I'm not going to beat up on myself and say, boy, you know, all the times I should have, um, you know, um, made the effort to go play with my kids. You know, I should have utilized those moments to do that. No, there were times I was just really tired. I can't do it, you know. But you get the gist of what I'm saying, that there were times I could have, but I didn't. Now I would love to redeem those moments, and I can't. Don't wait until it's too late, you know, for you to um, try to, you know, bond with your children, you know. Parents, you have to bond with your kids. You have to. They have to find you as a trusted friend. Uh, they know the difference between buddy friendship or just a confidant, someone that they can feel safe around. I always tell my boys, there's nothing you can tell me that would make me so angry at you. Now, I may tell you you're wrong, but I want you to feel comfortable to come speak to me. I don't ever want to make you feel you can't be open and be vulnerable to your dad. I want you to speak to me. Parents, you have to provide that safe haven for your children. 
You've got to let your kids know they can come and tell you anything. And yeah, you may get a little bit angry, but you're, 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 you are there for them. You're there to empower them, to equip them, to help them. So you got to provide that safe haven for them, that, that, that comfort in place, that rest in place. Because if you don't, you're going to fail at parenting because they're going to talk to somebody. They're going to go outside and they may be talking to the wrong people, right? So you need to make sure that you do everything possible to be there for your children. Now, don't be overbearing now. I learned that. Don't be overbearing. Don't always be, you know, I mean, you know, I grew up old school, grew up old school. And, um, you know, these kids are living in a different environment and so forth. Um, so, you know, I'm not used to certain things, you know. So when my um, boys, um, you know, would say, okay, um, you know, dad, um, you know, I'll be back. <laughs> you what? Where you going? <laughs> you know, because I grew up away where you don't go to your parents. I'll be back. What? Okay. You get your back broken. <laughs> you know, so, you know, and I, 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 I tried to tell myself, okay, all right, all right. You know, you, you got you got your wallet, you got your money, your license, you know, I'm trying to to, you know, figure this out and I had to learn that they're grown now. I mean, really, the only thing I tell them, and this is where good parenting is, I give my children the space to develop, to become a man, to be independent. But as long as you're in my house, as long as I'm taking care of you, because they're in college, I take care of their college. I take care of your food, your dwelling, everything. If you're dependent on me, now there's a certain level of respect that I demand. Because at age 18, technically you're a grown man. I don't have to. I don't have to. I do it because I feel obligated according to the word of God to do it. But I don't have to. There's a lot of fathers out there who don't. They're frustrated. They don't know. They, they don't have that willpower to look beyond all the stress, all of the issues that come with parenting, and they drop the ball. So I tell my balls all the time, I don't have to. But as long as you are under my care, there's certain things I will demand. You see, this is it. Parents, you got to break it down to your kids. Mother, you got to set the rules. Okay, or right, here it is. Here are my rules. Now, you have a choice. You can obey these rules or you can decide that you're not. However, whatever you choose, you have to bear the consequences. If you abide by my rules, oh, fine. You'll be taken care of. Everything is okay. I'll go beyond and above to help you out. But if you decide you're grown, you're going to disrespect me, then... Don't expect me to be loyal to you because I don't have to. I don't have to do it. You see, if I was obligated to do it, then fine. I don't have to do it. And once your kids understand that, then you've set the boundaries and you're cool. You're okay. You know, shouldn't be no problem. So you, you parents must understand. You hold the key to all of this, Right? And then let me just try to even close it off because there's just so much into this. But, you know, for those of you who are single or you're divorced and you're dealing with that, I understand many of you are hurting. Many of you are just, you're just, you're at the breaking point because you're dealing with children who are developing, children who are confused by the breakup. They're working, they're functioning in a dysfunctional family. And then you're dealing with your ex. And that alone in itself is, you know, traumatic. I get all of that. But what you have to make sure you do is to understand that God will never put on you more than what you can bear. And you have to, in life, you have to accept the realities of life. You have to accept that, okay, 
Unfortunately, your life is not like that woman that you see on social media posting her and her kids and her husband and her boyfriend. That's not your life, right? I understand that on social media, you see the perfect picture of a family. You go on television, you see the perfect picture of a family. You all, you know, all of those nice, wonderful things. I, I see, you see it, right? However, you must understand that's not you. Your reality is you have a baby daddy who messed up your life. You had a baby mama who is toxic. Your reality is your marriage didn't work. Th that's fact of life. Stop worrying about what people think. Stop thinking that you failed. Many, so many of us, especially us as Caribbean people. I want to talk to our Caribbean people. We are Caribbean people. Our parents brought us a certain way, and most of our parents were concerned about the neighborhood. They were more concerned of people's opinions, and, and they boxed themselves into something, trying to live up to people's expectations. And we grow up with that same mentality, and now we come living, trying to live up. We're dying. We are broken. We're hurting, and we're trying to live up to people's expectations, not knowing that these people don't really care a flip about us. They don't care nothing about you and me, right? They've, they, their opinions fluctuate. One minute they think this, next minute they think that. What you need to do is focus on you. Accept and embrace the fact that you are now a parent, single or together raising that child. Your job is to make that parenting the best you can. So at the end of the day, because there will be a time you have to wean yourself off those children. If you're a mother and your kids have passed college age and you're still taking care of them and they're not making an effort to go out there to start a life on their own, you are supporting their bad habits. You're supporting their bad habits. not good. You have to cut them off. See, I, I know at some point in time when my kids graduate from college, that's it. I, in fact, I told them, when you graduate from college, that's it. I will always be here for you, but don't expect all of this. Don't expect all of this because I've denied, I have denied a lot of years and resources and redirected it at them. And there ought to be a time for me. I'm talking to somebody. You work hard, many hours. You hustle out there, man. There ought to be a time that you say the next half of your life, your resources, your time, your energy is going to be on you. Because believe me, these kids today are not like the kids back in the 60s, 70s, even 80s and 90s. They're different. Don't believe, and they're not evil, they're not bad kids, but don't expect them to come take care of you when you're old. Don't expect them to put you in their homes with their family because you can not no longer afford a mortgage or a house because you still have a mortgage at 70 and, and, and so forth. Don't expect that because they may be living in a different state or even if they're right in the same city, they don't have time for you to live up in their house to alter their whole time. And you may say, how dare them? That's it. They're not obligated to. <laughs> so that's why you've got to take care of yourself. And when you know you have succeeded as a parent, it is when you know you've done your best at all stages to instill the word of God in them, to train them upright, to tell them right from wrong, to gradually wean them off depending on you, for their dependency to be on you. When you gradually do that, and then you get to a stage where after you have done all that you can for them, you can relax and say, now it's time to take care of me. That's when you know you've succeeded. So my friends, I hope I've helped you a little bit. I'm not a psychologist. I don't have a degree in child development, but I have a lot of wisdom. And I hope that you will take what I've said to you today and implement it in your life. Thank you so much for hanging with me today. Please share this podcast with someone. Would you do that? And uh, I hope to see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.